Hey guys, Matt Double Tap. I thought I had the camera running. Apparently, I did not. So, uh, you guys missed part of what I'm doing here. Uh, let me start over. We are going to start accurizing the, uh, the, uh, the DPMS gun for three gun competition. And the first thing I have to do is remove the a2 front sight post and the uh, the the gas tube, the flash hider, and all that. We're going to install after truing up the receiver. We're going to install a uh, a skeletonized free float front handguard, and uh, this handguard's kind of cool in that I bought one 17 inches that was made for an 18 inch gun and what it's going to do is cover the threaded portion of uh, the front of the 16 inch barrel and allow me to put an extended muzzle brake on and it'll still be you know hidden with inside that receiver I'm sorry that handguard and it'll give it a really good look because let's face it if you're interested in a uh, doing three gun, hey, yeah, the gun has to be functional. Well, we all like it to look cool. Uh, so, with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, remove it, put this handguard on. First, we're going to trip up the receiver, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, why I'm thinking about it, one of the steps I'm not going to do in accurizing this gun, and if you were doing a brand new build where you're putting a brand new barrel and a brand new bolt carrier together, you need to headspace it. And you do that with a set of gauges. You can get them at Brownells or Midway. They're, you know, 60, 70, 80, 100 bucks, depending on which ones you get. There's two different bullet type uh, items, and I didn't dig mine out because this gun's you know this gun bolt carrier groups have been used together before uh, so there's no need for me to headspace this uh, so with that in mind that if, if this was a brand new build brand new barrel brand new bolt carrier you would absolutely want to headspace it so uh, kind of put that in the back of your your knowledge base so I've already managed to remove this first pin and the second pin was being stubborn and about that time my camera shut off because it went into standby mode. Uh, so I was at the point, I've got this one rounded off because these things suck. But now I'm trying to use the old pin to knock the new pin out to avoid destroying my punches. These pins, had they never been taken out before, Just a pain in the butt, uh, and these these ones have never been removed. They're flared on both sides because uh, honestly, they're never really intended to come out or come out easily, and they're very effective for what they do. Now, if you, jeez, bent that pin. Uh, so, if you're really <coughs> looking to reutilize this, this isn't the way to go about it. I will throw this away because I'll never use it. I have four or five of them from other builds. I may need to. In fact, I'm going to. So this is one of them things that you got to kind of decide how confident you are with what you're about to do. I am going to take an angle grinder and knock the flare off that, which I almost thought about doing that in the first place. But being that I didn't, we're going to do it now. I'm going to be really careful not to hurt the barrel, and I don't care about the rest of it. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, so if you care <laughs> about saving the front sight post, you're not going to do that. As I don't. just a pain in the butt and that's warm all right so now we have a tiny little roll pin right here it's holding gas tube on there is no <coughs> excuse me there's absolutely no way to take this out without a good roll pin punch uh, again you can get roll pin punches from Midway or Brownells you need the super ultra tiny little prick to knock this roll pin out. It does not take a lot of force. And you don't want to lose that roll pin. They make a block to do this. I don't obviously don't use it. I utilize my vice blocks for the receivers. Obviously you don't need as much force to get that out as you do everything else. So we're going to take our little gas block pin and put it somewhere where we know we won't lose it. So, got that off. Uh, it's loose now. Oh, you're going to have to tap it off. It's not going to just fall off there even though it's loose. So. Uh, Next thing we got this handy little vice block for working on receivers is a must have item. It doesn't cost a whole lot from Midway or Brownells, whichever. I'm not promoting one or the other. They're both, in my opinion, just as good. They both have fantastic uh, items for gunsmithing. As soon as I get this set up in this vice, guys, I'll switch over. Now, I noticed as I came out here, my, uh, my cousin was kind enough to break the vice. So, I'm hoping this thing holds up through this video. Uh, if not, we got one on the back of a work truck we can use. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the flash suppressor. If you're going to reuse the flash suppressor, typically these are on there. Uh, if you're going to reuse it, you may have to, in fact, uh, you know, you're going to want to be careful. They are standard right hand thread, three quarter inch. Oh, wow, that's already loose. I don't think my voice is going to make it, guys. So that's very problematic for the rest of this. Uh, your crush washer goes, it's got a flared end on it, or a crowned end. The crowned end goes back towards the back of the weapon system. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's crown. The crown goes to the back. And I really, really hope this place holds up. We may have to do some redneck stuff. So now what we're going to do, we got our gas block loose. Oh, let me move the camera. We got our gas block off now, or loose. That's all it's holding it. So we're just going to take a hammer. And tap her off. And you might have to tap it past on the barrel of the 
front of the barrel. Uh, so that's what that front A2 gas block looks like. Uh, we will very carefully store that somewhere. Uh, remove this handguard carry holder and now we can just pull our gas block out and we can see that the gas block has not been cleaned all that much but we're going to use it we're going to clean it up because this is the budget build so next thing we got to do we got to get our uh, barrel nut off there's the beat up old Mustang that one of these days we're going to maybe think about trying to restore. So, back to our armor's tool. Uh, man, this critter is just a must-have item. If you're going to build any kind of guns, it, uh, it's got the, hand, or the barrel wrench, it's got the handguard, or the castle nut wrench, it's got various sizes of flash suppressors and stuff so to get into these teeth we're going to use that spot right there and it just kind of pushes back and this is probably the point where my vice breaks yeah this is the point where the vice breaks okay I'm going to shut this off and move it outside to the back of the work truck and we'll continue so I know it's windy out here and I don't know how well this wireless mic's going to you know, control the wind. So if it's really noisy, I apologize. So uh got checked up. I had to be careful on the angle because I can't have my company logo in the video. So we're going to take our... And take off the nut. Nice, the other bit on there, or the other nib work. So we got that off. Now, I'm going to move everything back inside and uh, try to work back out of the wind. Be right back. Alright, we're back in here out of the wind. We're, uh, now that you got the uh, barrel nut off, the barrel just comes out. So, uh, the next step in this is going to be to really clean up the uh, the barrel and the receiver. But uh, I'm hoping this vice works because I don't have to put that much pressure pressure on the next level of this. I'm hoping that I can use this vice to stay inside. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to go down to the store and buy a new vice real quick. So, just need enough pressure on it to hold it there in the vise. So, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to use our lapping tool. Well, it looks dark on this camera. So we're going to use our lapping tool, which this is another one of those high speed Brownells or Midway, they both have it. Uh, if you're going to true up a gun, must have item. <coughs> it is a very heavy metal, uh, not only in weight, but, but in... Uh, density as well and since we're using an aluminum uh, receiver we can uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a lot of oil on this area and then we have a grinding compound 
that's going to go right here on this lip. And you chuck that up in a drill on that end. And we are going to... Not all these receivers are true. So we don't need to take a bunch of metal off here. May not even really need to take any at all if it's already true. Uh, but be that as it may, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of lubricant on this big metal thing here because that's going to spin around in the receiver. Like so. Ha <laughs> ha It doesn't want to go past the dust cover. Really, that was an unforeseen. And this vice block absolutely will not grab this with the dust cover closed. Normally you do this to a brand new setup, not a older one. I mean, I guess you can do it to an older one normally, but... <laughs> well, plan B. I will be back with plan B in a minute. So, plan B is, now we got to do this by hand, uh, which there's not really any place that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, there's no way to screw this up, even though it's not in a vise, I like to do it in a vise, I'm not going to lie, but uh, I do this to absolutely every gun I build, so normally there's no dust cover already installed when I do this and normally I have a vise that works so what this tool does is it rides in your bolt carrier chamber very accurately it is the exact size plus a little of your uh, of your bolt carrier so we're going to just put ever so little bit of this uh, grinding compound. This is not polishing compound. <coughs> Excuse me. You do not. You, we are not polishing this. We are going to actually grind on it. So we are going to take just ever so little of this compound, and we are going to put it on there. You can feel the grit to it. Uh, there's no real way to screw this up as far as too much. As, I mean, you don't need to put... A, this stuff's expensive. You don't need to put a bunch of it on there. But, uh... Flip that over. Well, I kind of feel like my camera's got a setting in it that I don't know about where it's shutting itself off after every little bit. I may have to get in there and figure that out. <coughs> uh, so, excuse me. So, uh, like I said, we've cured up the front of the bolt face because I don't know where the camera just cut off. Uh, and what it'll do is if that front, if that face was just a little bit off, it would make that barrel sit in there just not perfect. So this is one of the, a really big step, honestly, in accurizing a rifle. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest things you could do is what we've managed to do now is we have where the barrel will now truly go in and uh, just sit in there at a perfect 90 degree angle. A good barrel, you can almost guarantee that flange is true. Uh, if you're buy I mean, if you're buying anything from anybody that's, you know, worth a shit, they, uh, it, it's going to be a true barrel. I've never ran across one that wasn't. Doesn't mean it can't happen. I've just never seen it. So now that we've done that, I'm going to clean all this up. 
and uh, I'm going to bath it in brake cleaner and then some acetone, suck all the oil out of it. And it's very important to get all the oil out of where the barrel extension, that's, that's this part, where the barrel extension goes into the receiver. It's super important to get all that ultra clean and ultra grease free because the next step is we're going to take this, we're going to lock this in the vise and we're going to coat this with uh, Loctite. And I know a lot of people you just went, what? It has to do with barrel harmonics. I'm not going to explain it. I know everybody does it. All the major gun builders do it. There's a whole lot of argument as to what Loctite you're supposed to run, whether it's I think the green 620 is one that is commonly used. Uh, there's the important part about it is it needs to be high tensile strength, Loctite, and it needs to be uh, high temperature. I've always used a green 620. Uh, a friend of mine told me that he always uses the high temperature red. So that's what I'm going to try on this gun. Uh, Contrary to popular belief, Loctite is not, not, you can get it back off, it just takes a little work. So if this doesn't help or work the way it's supposed to, I'll take it back apart and I'll take it off and I'll put the green, green stuff on there. But uh, as of right now, I'm going to go ahead and try the red high temperature. Uh, and do all that. So I'm going to clean it up, but before I put this all together... I'm going to take another step. I'm going to take and just real quick, I'm going to grab my Dremel tool and the feed ramps, which there's two feed ramps on the inside, little tiny pieces of a feed ramp. I mean, they're, they're almost non-noticeable, but they're there. You can see them. It's two little dimples to the left and right of the hole. And then the feed ramp here and here on this barrel I'm going to take my polishing tip and I'm going to polish them uh, I'm going to do that before I clean it up uh, before I even you know I'll clean it off a little bit polish that polish that I have some polishing compound here polish each of those real quick with a Dremel tool polish that ramp just a little bit I'm not even trying to change anything I just want it shiny before I put it all back together so I'm going to grab the Dremel, I'm going to polish that up, we're going to clean it all up, and I'm just going to hose it down with brake free or brake cleaner, get all I can get off of it, and then I'm going to give it a little bit of an acetone bath, and then I'm going to pol and hit it with some brake cleaner again, and give it another acetone bath. You want absolutely every bit of grime, grease, anything that's currently on this barrel, and inside where the barrel extension goes into the receiver. You want it perfectly, perfectly clean, no oils. So, and we drop test our receivers. That makes, that ensures they can take a beating. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm going to do a little bit of polishing, do a little cleaning, which I'm not going to make you guys sit through. If you don't know how to use brake cleaner and acetone to clean things, you probably shouldn't be doing this. So, I'm going to go through all that, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to get to the uh, setting the barrel in with the Loctite. All right, guys, so the wind's really howling out there, so you're not going to get to see me do what I want to do. So I'm going to explain it. Uh, I've got my barrel good and cleaned. I'm not going to touch anything because now, I mean, I know... You don't want any kind of uh, you know, body oils on that right there. So what I've done is I've cleaned the new barrel nut for the the uh, for the free float tube. I've cleaned the barrel and I've cleaned the receiver. Now, if you decided one last check with your meat hooks on that receiver, stuck your finger in there, clean it out again. You don't want any oil in there whatsoever. I am using Loctite 272. This is high temperature, high tensile strength, red Loctite. Uh, like I said, the green 360 or 320, whichever one's high temperature. 
is what's normally used. Now, I'm also going to use 33 MS grease. This is thread grease. I'm also going to put this on liberally uh, on the threads because I don't want to contaminate my threads with Loctite in any way. So I'm going to kind of over over grease the tip here so any Loctite would be pushed off by the grease. And then as I screw the barrel nut in uh, I will uh, you don't want any grease on the front of it where the marriage is. So we're going to grease a lot <coughs> these threads. It's okay if it pushes out the back later we can clean it up but the whole point in putting this bead up front is when I grease and slide or when I Loctite and slide the the barrel into the receiver I want it to uh, to push any of the Loctite out so make sure we don't have any grease in the barrel where the receiver extension goes and make sure we don't have any on the receiver face because we want a good a marriage there as we can get and yes I know somebody spit out their drink when I said we're putting Loctite on it but we are uh, if you look up any of the major manufacturers I've watched several videos over the years of manufacturers that said they do this so this is not something I invented this is not something I came up with by myself as always if you want to fact check me please you know go to one of the major barrel manufacturers if they've happened to put out a video on doing this and uh, you'll see that I'm not the only one doing this so I've got a, just a super heavy coating of grease, not on the face, I'm going to take this out, <coughs> now when you tighten this barrel nut down you need 30 to 40 pound, foot pounds of torque, if you've got a torque wrench it's great. Uh, I normally would use a torque wrench as it turns out I don't have whatever metric size that is for this barrel nut. Uh, I, normally they're inch and an eighth and my inch and an eighth is sloppy on it so it's some oddball size. Uh, so I'm going to put this in my vice block, I'm going to take it out to the truck vice, I'm going to chuck it in and I'm going to chuck it in as much of a downward slope as I can get. The other thing I've done is I've plugged the barrel with paper, made sure not to get it and you know where the Loctite's going to be. So when I actually do put it up in there, if any bubbles out the top, it doesn't go down in the barrel. That would be bad. So, uh, but we'll look immediately after doing this and locking the bolt down. Uh, so after we do this, I'm going to find a place. I'm going to hang it vertically, so all that Loctite sits down against the barrel plate and the receiver and I'm going to let it cure I'm going to let it cure overnight so I will show you that here in a minute I'm going to take this all out there set it up uh, you're going to put a lot of Loctite you want a good coat of Loctite all over this barrel extension which I just touched now i got to clean it back up uh, you want a very very good amount of Loctite on there so it squishes out the front have a rag in your pocket because after it squishes out before you put the barrel nut in there you're going to want to get any and all that you can out before you run the uh, barrel nut on so I'm also going to throw this little bit of Loctite or not Loctite sorry grease and the threads of this barrel nut just enough to I'm working it down into threads so there's some in every 
inch of the threads, but that's also going to be a catalyst to keep any of the uh, Loctite that might get into those threads off of there. Because should you ever want to take this barrel nut off, red Loctite will make it a pain in the ass. So would green, so it's not like this is just a red Loctite that's... Uh, going to put the hose to you if that's the case. Uh, so, again, super coated the inside of the barrel nut, clean off the outside. Just want to make sure the threads are, the threads are greased, the outside isn't. Uh, have a good rag with you. I really wish the wind wasn't blowing like 10,000 miles an hour outside. Uh, because the wind blow would just drive you nuts. But I'm going to lock it in the vise. I'm going to coat it with Loctite. Coat the barrel extension with Loctite. Push it up in. Thread it on. Hurry up quick. Put, you know, good and hard. If you don't have a, I mean, good and tight. The German method. If you don't have a torque wrench, don't go buy one for it. Just, uh, you know, crank it on as good as hard as you, I mean, you, you can tell things are about to break. If you feel like it's going to break, stop. Uh, so that's where we're at. After I get it all put together and uh, go to hang it up in here and let it air dry overnight, I'll... Uh, I'll come back and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Alright, we got a little bit of low on the wind. If it picks back up, it's going to get windy. There ain't nothing I can do about that. But I really wanted to show this part. So I got everything ready. We are going to really coat. And I kind of coat, I don't know if you can see that. I like to coat the kind of the frontish of this. I really don't coat the whole way to the back when I'm squirting it in there. You know, this has a pretty good viscosity, which is why I'm trying it. Um, and so, get our handy dandy coating of that on there. Gonna move it around a little bit. Somebody's going to say you probably shouldn't do that with your fingers because you're getting grease on it. And they're probably right. I can't really argue that. But this is actually quite a bit thicker than the green that I'm used to using, honestly. Which, that's what I wanted. So, get a good coating on there. ready so we're gonna try and line it up as easy as we can and it's fine that it's pushing out now I've got that all that extra pushed out there just gonna kind of wipe off the extra I'm holding the barrel in with pressure at this moment I wish I could have brought more eggs Get all that excess that pushed out the best you can. So barrel nut in. As you're screwing this barrel nut in, work it back and forth because you want to get all the the threads thoroughly greased.
like the ones picking back up, but we got it in there. We're going to make sure we don't have any on the chamber. And uh, we'll be right back. So I'm not going to show you down inside it because I, I wanted to get it vertical uh, and keep it that way. Uh, I had literally no uh, Loctite that pushed out into the chamber, which is awesome. Uh, and I've never had it with the green either. I just wasn't sure what the what the uh, the effect of the red was going to be. If the red was going to act differently going into the barrel, uh, I feel. And I'll tell you why I use red this time. I feel like the red sets up harder and. I don't even know how to say what I want to say. It doesn't crack as easy. So uh, that's why I decided to try the red. If it sucks, I will take it off and put the green on there. And I will honestly, I'll do an update to the video uh, if it does suck. By the end of this accusation series, we'll know. Uh, 30 to 40 foot pounds is really what the barrel nut's supposed to be at. Uh, I don't have a way to test that right now. Not, uh, but what you don't want to do now is retorque it. So what I've got on there, which is a lot, I know how hard I can you know, tighten stuff down. Uh, so it ought to be okay the way it is. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the way this handguard's going to look when it's all said and done. Uh, so, like I said, just to go over the steps, pull it all apart, clean it real good, grease the threads as greasy as you can get them, clean the grease off later, uh, put the red Loctite or green Loctite. If you're Excuse me. If you're scared of the red, the green is what virtually everybody uses. Uh, you know, tighten it down. You might want to make sure. I can't believe with all the wrench that I don't have the wrench that fits that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, that's it for the bedding and truing of the barrel. That's the first step in this. Uh, side note, you realize that you know you do dumb things. So earlier on in the video, I was fighting with that dust cover, and then I realized as I was getting ready to put the barrel in there, the dust cover needed to come off anywhere because I've got a flat dark earth dust cover that's going back on. So uh, I took the dust cover off. I could have done that in the first place. But normally I do these from generic builds, uh, not from, you know, starting with an existing gun. There's nothing wrong with starting from an existing gun. If you've got a gun that, you know, you like the gun, that it's just not shooting true for you, by all means, this is a great way to, to uh, you know, make it better. Uh, like I said, the A2 flash hider, I have, or not flash hider, I'm sorry, the A2 front sight post, I have three or four of them already. Four other guns and other barrels that I've used from stuff, so to me it didn't matter that I ground at it. I don't know a good way to get them pins out, uh, honestly, to be completely truthful. I've never known a good way. If somebody knows, you know, a better way to get them out than what I did, normally taking one ball peen hammer, normally I have one that's got a little bit more of a tip on it, like a body hammer style thing that works really good, and I just don't have one here. Uh, but if you know a better way, I'd sure like to know it. Uh, that front sight post gas block is becoming a thing of the past more and more anyway. Uh, so, 
there we have the accurized trued up barrel so uh, like I said this gun was shooting right at an inch inch and a half at a hundred when we started this little adventure uh, I actually have the video I have a little bit of video I went through the video and like I said uh, if you didn't watch my last video uh, we thought the camera was running all day yesterday and it wasn't but I do have happen to have some video of this gun going on paper at 100 yards so I'll post it up and uh, so everybody can see truly I'll, I'll put it at the end of this video I might even put it in here while I'm talking if I can figure out how to do that but uh, I may not be that smart on video editing just yet but uh, so I'll post this up at the end the three shot group I put on it at a hundred yards I mean it's it's inch inch and a half it's probably real close to an inch so we're gonna see if we can tighten that up some I appreciate you guys watching stay tuned for the next level uh, and let me tell you before I go away uh, everything that we got I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you how to take a mill spec mill spec trigger and make it okay for competition is it going to be as good as a two or three hundred dollar drop-in no it's not I'm going to teach you how to make it stack not stack I'm going to show you how to use a set screw to stop the over travel you can get the set screw for 40 cents you can polish and some people like to file on the trigger and hammer I don't because that's a good way to make a gun unsafe uh, I'm going to show you how to b to clip your springs and drastically lighten up a mill spec trigger and make it I can usually get them in the three four pound range and not stack and not have any over travel uh, the set screw cost you 40 cents get in any hardware store it is a uh, quarter 28, I believe, thread. And uh, just get a little half inch long, quarter 28, and a shorter uh, set screw, and then a, uh, a uh, shorter screw to hold your grip on. Three quarters of an inch is more than adequate. Uh, that's what I actually use is three quarter of an inch and a half inch set screw so uh, I will tell you right now why I'm thinking about it in case I forget to mention it later hopefully you're watching all this video series if you're doing the set screw trick you got to be careful you need to make sure that your receivers have been drilled and tapped the whole way through in that hole that the, the grip screw goes in. Uh, many Anderson receivers have not been tapped all the way through. They're drilled all the way through, but they're not tapped. If you run a set screw in there and you force it, you'll crack your receiver. That's experience talking. I did it. Uh, so we're going to let this dry overnight, and uh, we'll get on to the gas block and reinserting the gas tube and all that stuff tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys.